Hi, everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go through uh, supernatant test predictions. So I have one problem that we're going to answer a whole bunch of questions about and uh, including supernatant tests. So uh, you can see the question here. If you want, you can maybe pause it and try working through the first bullet point yourself. Uh, maybe actually the first couple bullet points, um, but I'll sort of work through it myself here. So I have it here. All right, so this is a classic molarity stoichiometry problem, where instead of me giving you grams, I give you uh, the uh, volume and the molaric. All right, so uh, this real quick. Hold on. All right, so we start with a balanced equation. So ammonium phosphate is going to be parentheses NH43 PO4. And even though I didn't tell you a solution of, I know this is going to be aqueous because it has molarity, and molarity only applies to aqueous solutions. All right, this bonds with uh, or reacts with magnesium nitrate. So MgNO32 aqueous. So this ammonium bonds with the nitrate, giving us NH4NO3. The magnesium bonds with the phosphate, giving us Mg3PO4. Oops, oh, sorry, no, Mg3PO42. And uh, I don't have my sheet with me, but I'm 99% uh, sure ammonium nitrate is aqueous and magnesium phosphate is solid. So I kind of ran out of room there, but I know that this reaction does go through because we form a solid product. To balance this, we need a two here, a three there, a six there, and a one there, giving me a two, three, six, one ratio. All right, let's fill in a BCA table. So that stands for before change and after. Uh, your chem teacher might call this an ice table, initial change and equilibrium. Uh, it's just a useful way of organizing the moles in a reaction. So we start with moles of each of our reactants. Now, normally in stoic, we go grams to moles. Well, we don't have grams here. So what do we do? Well, we're going to remember that uh, molarity equals moles over liters. So moles equals molarity times liters. So all we have to do is multiply our molarity times liters for each of our solutions. So notice we're given milliliters. We need to turn that into liters by dividing by 1,000. So this gives us 0 0.0238 liters and 0 0.0338 liters. We're going to multiply each of those by their molarities to get moles of our starting reactants. 0 0.0238 times 0.375 gives us with three sig figs 0 0.00893, 0 0.00893. And for our second one, 0 0.0338 times 0 0.520 gives us uh, 0 0.0176. So that's our starting moles. Uh, now we have to determine the limiting reactant. Oh, well, I guess we could fill in our products. So before the reaction, we have zero moles of this and zero moles of that. So now we have to find the limiting reactant. Now I can look at those two numbers and I can just sort of tell that the second number is pretty much exactly twice the first number. Uh, and I need one and a half times more of it, but we have two times as much. So I can already tell that my limiting is probably going to be the first one, but let's be very thorough here. So I'm going to take 0 0.00893, multiply it by 1.5 to get me 0 0.0134. That's how much I need for my second one. And as you can see, I have more than that. So I'm going to go ER for this one and LR for this one. Remember, you may use the method where you just divide your moles by the coefficient for each of them, and the smaller number is your LR. So however you find LR, find the LR. And to continue in the BCA table, we're going to subtract the limiting reactant, because that's the one that fully reacts, leaving us with zero. And now from here, you can go in any order you want. You might choose to skip this for the second column, because a two to three ratio can be a little tricky. It might be easier to go two to six, and then backtrack for two to three. 
because then you, don't, you only deal with whole number ratios. But I'll tackle this one head on here. A two to three ratio, how many times bigger is that? Well, that's one and a half times bigger. So I'm going to say times 1.5. 0 0.00893 times 1.5 means 0 0.0134 moles are going to react, meaning they're going to go away. So minus 0 0.0134 moles leaves us with 0.0176 minus 0 0.0134 0 0.0042. And that's how many moles are going to be left over. Now I'm gonna purposely leave that bottom number with two sig figs because we subtracted to get that. I have three sig figs in the top number minus the second number, but I don't look at sig figs, I look at decimal points, decimal places. All right, for the rest of the BCA table, uh, we can go in any order we want. I'll go from here to here. So that's a three to six ratio. So I'm gonna double that, 0 0.0134 times two is 0 0.0268, and that's how much forms, so times two, 0 0.0268, leaving us with 0 0.0268. And now from here, we'll apply a six to one ratio. We're gonna divide this by six, giving us 0 0.00447 forming, 0 0.00447, leaving us with 0 0.00447. Okay, and of course, you can do these in any order you want. You may have chosen to do the products before the ER to give you a little bit of an easier ratio there. Uh, but however you do it, this ends up being uh, our answers. All right, now let's get to the sketch and the, the supernate test, because that's the whole purpose of this video. All right, so I'm going to erase this for some room. And I'll erase it from here. All right, so to sketch this, I'm going to say beaker number one plus beaker number two yields beaker number three. In my first beaker, I have ammonium phosphate. So I do ammonium ions and phosphate ions with waters pointing towards the positive ion and away from the negative ion. Second beaker, I have magnesium ions and nitrate ions with waters pointing towards the positive ion and away from the negative ion. In my final beaker, I have ammonium nitrate aqueous, so that's split up into ions, so NH4 plus and NO3 minus, with waters pointing towards the positive and away from the negative. I have magnesium phosphate solid, so Mg3 parentheses PO42, that's my precipitate, which settles at the bottom. And now we need just one last thing, which is what I refer to as the third ion. That's going to be the extra ion from your excess reactant. So notice the ER is the magnesium nitrate. So I need to make sure I have both magnesium and nitrate ions in my final beaker floating around. I already have one of them, nitrate. So that means the third ion is going to be magnesium, Mg2+, plus with waters facing it like that. So that's my sketch. Next is the supernatant test. Let me erase beakers one and two for this. And I also want to deal with just the supernatant for this. So I'm going to erase my precipitate. Remember, the precipitate is the solid that forms and generally sinks to the bottom. The precipitate is the solution above that, which contains your, your aqueous ions. So it's always going to be the two ions from your aqueous product. In our case, the aqueous product is ammonium nitrate. And it's going to contain the third ion from your excess reactant, if you have an excess reactant. So in this case, magnesium. And to run a supernatant test, we're really seeing, uh, it's a way of checking in a laboratory setting whether those three ions are actually present. So we're going to say, if we add our first reactant, it's up on the left. So the first reactant is NH43PO4 aqueous. I say dot, dot, dot. And then we're going to say if we add Mg parentheses NO32 aqueous, dot, dot, dot. 
what I'm asking is if we add each of our reactants separately to that supernatant, will we see a reaction? And by see a reaction, we're talking about the formation of our solid product. When I say see a reaction, I mean, will we form the precipitate, which in this case is magnesium phosphate. Now, how do we make magnesium phosphate? You need two things, magnesium and phosphate. If you have magnesium and phosphate in the same container, you're gonna have a reaction. So notice there's really just one missing piece. We have ammonium, which does nothing, nitrate, which does nothing, and magnesium, which is just waiting for some phosphate to react. All right, let's go through the supernatant test. So if we add ammonium phosphate, will we see a reaction? The answer is yes. Yes, we will see a reaction because if we add ammonium phosphate, what are the ammonium ions going to do? Nothing. They're just going to float around because there's already ammonium. But the key is the phosphate. This phosphate ion is going to find this magnesium ion. They're going to react and they're going to form solid. So if you're asked to do an explanation for this, you would say, yes, we will see a reaction because the phosphate ions that you add will react with the magnesium ion in the, in the supernatant which is from the excess react. Follow up here, if we add magnesium nitrate, will we see a reaction? So if I take magnesium nitrate aqueous, now remember magnesium nitrate aqueous really means magnesium ions and nitrate ions. If I add those, will I see magnesium phosphate form? And the answer is no, no reaction. Why? Because in order to see a solid product, in this case, I need magnesium and phosphate. And if I add magnesium and nitrate to this supernatant, I'm still missing phosphate. So you would say no reaction because you're still missing phosphate. And you can also add that you already have both of those ions. Notice we already have magnesium. We already have nitrate. Here's your magnesium. Here's your nitrate. So you're adding nothing new. You're just adding more of the same. All right, the final question in this uh, hypothetical experiment is, what are some possible explanations if you fail the supernatant test? So this was what we expected to see. We expected a reaction from ammonium phosphate, but not magnesium nitrate. What ended up happening was the opposite. If you fail the supernatant test, the opposite happened, meaning we saw a reaction here, and we saw no reaction here. So what does that mean? Well, if ammonium phosphate re did not react, but magnesium nitrate did, well, that means we must not have had magnesium in here. Sorry, this is getting a little sloppy here, but we must not have had magnesium because if there was magnesium, we would see a reaction with the phosphate. And what must have been there instead? Well, if we got a reaction from magnesium nitrate, and we formed magnesium phosphate, that means there must have been phosphate in here. So instead of your supernatant containing ammonium, nitrate, and magnesium, that way, it actually contained ammonium, nitrate, and phosphate. So that's what the supernatant must have looked like. Now the question is, what errors could have led to this happen? Well, perhaps you added too much of your ammonium phosphate. You meant to add 23.8. Maybe you added several milliliters more than that, enough to kind of skew the limiting reactant. <clears throat> or maybe you added far too little magnesium nitrate. You meant to add 33.8. Maybe you only added like 20 something. So maybe you added too much of the phosphate containing solution or not enough of the non-phosphate containing solution. Or what if the volumes were perfect? What if the molarities were actually off? You thought you were adding 0.375. What if that was too weak? Or, or sorry, what, what, if, what if that was more concentrated than you, oh, sorry, in this case, it would be less concentrated. What if the actual concentration were something like 0.500 molar? It's stronger than you thought it was going to be, which would lead to more ammonium phosphate and specifically more phosphate. So another possibility is there was more 
uh, the molarity was higher there, or even that the, the molarity was lower in the magnesium nitrate. Maybe you thought you were adding 0.520, but you were only adding like 0.300, meaning there was much less magnesium uh, than you actually thought. So those are some lab analysis type questions. All right, so I hope this cleared up supernatant tests, supernatant test predictions, and a couple lab questions from there. All right, good luck.